Hello, welcome to the third shear in Kutu Space Rabbeinu Shabbavel. And we're holding, uh, my name is Levi Jacobson, and we're holding Ice Hay in Kuntur Space Rabbeinu Shabbavel. I'd like to usually start the class with looking at the Pesach Davar. So let's go here into the introduction of this Kuntris. The Kuntris, the reason I'd like to start with this is many people don't realize that the expansion of 770 is not just a detail in the Kuntris, but it's the entire reason for this Kuntris. As you can see, the Pesach Davar over here, it says, that this is Bekesher im Hagdolas Varchovas Pesach Nessus of Isamedrish Hamerkazi, the Lubavitch, the Lubavitch, 770. Hinu Metsim Loer Kuntris be Indian Mikdash Mat, the Zebes Rabbeinu Shabbavel, the Sikhis Hakad Mushlita. So the entire Kuntris is in connection with the expansion of 770. In Ois Aleph, the Rebbe introduced us to the Kantash Mat. Ois Beis, we spoke about that there are difference there are, that there are differences in levels of Mikdash Ma'at. There's re the regular type of Mikdash Ma'at, and then there's the main Mikdash Ma'at, which is the substitute of the actual base of Mikdash itself. In Ois Gimel, we spoke about that the Mikdash Ma'at is not just about during the time of Galus, but also when we are redeemed. It's also a big deal. The main Mikdash Ma'at is the place where the redemption starts, and it's where the Mikdash. Um, so the, the Rebbe explains in Ayis Dalit actually that 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 this, the, that uh, that the base of Mikdash starts from where the main Mikdash Ma'at is, and from there it moves to Yerushalayim. And Ayis Gimel he was saying that because it's because there are differences in Mikdash Ma'at, so even after the Geula, when we have the base of Mikdash and Shechina will go back to, to Yerushalayim, still the main Mikdash Ma'at will have uh, the closest, will be connected, uh, touching the base of Mikdash itself without any separations. And therefore the, the, the big deal of the main Mikdash Ma'at is not just in Galus, but even after Mashiach comes, even after the base of Mikdash is rebuilt. Okay, uh, we're starting Ice Hay. Yesh la Haisif Bebior Ha'iloi de Beis Rabbeinu Shabbat The Rebbe will now explain to us more about the how great Beis Rabbeinu Shabbat is. So until now, the main quality that Rebbe spoke about Beis Rabbeinu Shabbat is that it's a show. And the, being that it has the mile of a shul, and it's the shul of the of, of the nasi, it's then it's the shul that Hashem picked to be the main mikdash ma'at. So now the Rebbe is going to show us the the mile of this main mikdash ma'at is also being that it's that it belongs to Rabbeinu, that it's the house of Rebbe. The additional quality the base of Rabbeinu Shabbat has. Yes, so Rabbi Lazar in the Gemara, when it speaks about uh, the Mikdash Ma'at of the Pasuk, so Rabbi Yitzchak says, these are the Bate Knesias, the Bate Midrashis of Bavel. And Rabbi Lazar says, this is base Rabbeinu Shabbat Now, we also explained that Rabbi Yitzchak and Rabbi Lazar are not arguing, that they, they both agree that there are Mikdash Ma'at. It's just that there is uh, an additional uh, quality in the Mikdash Ma'at of uh, the, the base of Enosh of Babel is, is a greater Mikdash Ma'at. Now, when Rabbi is speaking in Ois Hay about that special about base of Enosh of Babel is that it, it's base Rabbeinu. So the Rebbe explains now also this helps us understand why Rebbe Lazar is Dafka saying Beis Rabbeinu Shebebavol, not Beis Akneses or Beis Amedrash Shal Rabbeinu. 
because besides for the fact that it's a shul and it's a base medrash, because it is associated with Rabbeinu, that itself gives it, it gives it a major quality, a major advantage. Rabbeinu stam, the kol b'nei Yisra, and it, it's referring to not just specific, a specific teacher, a specific Rebbe, but the Rebbe, Rabbeinu, our Rebbe, meaning the Rebbe of all the Yidin, and the Sihadar, the Nas generation, the Rabbeinu Shebebovel, Rabban shall call Bnei Hagayla, and when it says when it says base Rabbeinu Shebebovel, it means the the Rebbe of the, of everyone in Galus. Now, out of forty or the higher, should Rabbeinu? Hold on, um, I realized that on this screen I have to go to the next page. I'm looking at a print that uh, it's on the same page. Okay. According, uh, Rashi explains on that Gemara Megillah of Tesem Aleph that when it says Rabbeinu to Rav, Rav the he um, he was the Rabbeinu of Bavel. He was the main Rebbe of, of Bavel, and that's actually why he's called Rav. Shenikra Rav Stam. He's called Rav without any other title, without any other name. Meaning the Rebbe, meaning the Rebbe the Rav, the teacher of everyone. To my Shekhoidin, now the Rebbe quotes a Rashbam in, uh, from Psachim, Gemara Psachim, Kofitesam and Beis, and Baba Basra, and Beis and Aleph. And the Rashbam over there explains about the name Rav. He says, Kemoy Shekhoidin, the Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rabbi Be'eretz Yisrael, just like in Eretz Yisrael. They call Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, they don't call him by his name. All you need to say is Rabbi, and everyone knows that you're talking about Rabbi Yehuda Nasi. All you need to say is Rebbe, and everyone knows who you're talking about when you say Rebbe. So too, Karu Nami Bebavel Rav. Rav had the same story. He was also in Bavel. Uh, he was referred to as Rav, and that meant the Rebbe of the whole Bavel of everyone, which is Rav. Uh, his real name was not that. Now, uh, there's another thing that, he, that, that the Rebbe quotes from Gemara in Chulin, Kuflam at Zayin Amid Beis. Gemara over there says, he, he, the Gemara, I'll, I'll actually quote the actual Gemara. One second. Okay, here we go. The actual Gemara over there is like this. Amar man reish sidra, the bavo. Rabbi Yochanan said to Isi, who is the head of the yeshiva, which is referred to as reish sidra in bavo. So Isi said to Rabbi Yochanan, Amar Abba Aricha. It is Abba the tall, meaning the Amaira Rav. So Rabbi Yochanan said to Isi, you're calling him Abba the Tall in such a familiar manner? The Chirna Kadhava Yusivna Achar Yud Zayin Shuron Achere, the Rav, Kame the Rabbi, the Nofki Zikukin the Nur, Mi Pume the Rav, the Pume the Rabbi, or Mi Pume the Rabbi, the Pume the Rav, the less I know Yoda, Mahin Omrin, but at Abba Aricha Korislei. So uh, he said to him, I remember, Rabbi Yechon said to Isi, you call him Abba the Tall? I remember when I sat 17 rows behind Rav, who sat before Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, and fiery sparks emerged from the mouth of Rav to the mouth of Rabbi, and from the mouth of Rabbi to, to the mouth of Rav. And I did not know what they said because of the profundity of their discussion. And yet you call him Abba the Tall. So I, I was just giving you the um, the background of that of that Gemara and this Ha'ar over here. But we see the main point here is that Rabbi Yechanan says to Isi, who is the Reish, the Reish Sidra, who is the head of the yeshiva? And Isi responds, Abba the Tall, meaning Rav. So Rav was considered the head of the yeshiva. This is, he, he was the main Rebbe of Bavel. And this is all going on the, the fact that Rashi explains that when we say, who's Rabbeinu? 
So Rashi says Rabbeinu means the Rebbe of Bavel, Rav. So we continue inside in the Sicha, in the Kuntris. When we're talking about Beis Rabbeinu, we're talking about the house of the Nasi Hadar. And we know Shahanasi Hu Hakal. We know from Rashi in uh, in his explanation on on the and Parshas Chukas Perek Chof Aleph Pasuk Chof Aleph. Rashi says Hu Hakal. I'll just give you also the background on that uh, pasuk over there. It's the pasuk of Aishlach Yisrael Malachim and Melech Sichain. So. Uh, she says over here, Haksuvin Alalu Srichin Zalaza, Zen Noyel Vzepe Seyach, Shemoshe Hu Yisrael. Okay, basically, like this, because the, the Psukim said like this. One place it says, Vayishlach Yisrael Malachim, that the Yisrael, that, that the Yidin sent Malachim. And in another place it says that Moshe sent Malachim. So what's going on? We need both Psukim where it says that Moshe sent Malachim. And where it says, oh, sorry, hold on. I'm sorry. This is the key. Thank you. Sure. So one says that Moshe, because why? Moshe, who is Israel? Rashi says, Moshe is Israel. The Israel, hey, Moshe. And, and Israel is our Moshe. And therefore, what, what is it teaching us? The Si Hadar, who call Hadar. The Nasi of the generation is the entire generation. Hanasi, who Hakal. Um, now, it's interesting also to note that by the time this, uh, when this Kuntus was published, the Rebbe was actually, the Rebbe actually moved out of his private home on President Street and moved into, so at that time, Beis Rabbeinu Shev 770 was not just, the Rebbe is also, we'll see, he refers to the Friedrich Rebbe, that the Friedrich, this is the Friedrich Rebbe's house. But uh, because the Rafidik Rebbe lived in, in 770 for the last 10 years of the Rafidik Rebbe's life, by al -Madain. But we should, it's also good to note that the Rebbe also, at this point, uh, when this Kuntus was published, the Rebbe was also living in 770. It was 770 was the Rebbe's house already then. And this is the Rebbe's point that we're dealing with the house of the Nasi Hadar. Now, in the Ha'ara 42, he says that what's coming up over here, you could look in the Kutei Teira, in Parsha Vazay Sabracha, uh, to see the context. In the Kutei Teira over there, he speaks about what is the whole concept of the Beis HaMikdash. And just to fill you in over there, so he says, first of all, we all know, and Yud Shvat is coming up, so everyone is learning about V'asuli Mikdash, V'shachanti B'Seicham, it doesn't say b'seichai. It says b'seicham in each and every one of us. B'seich kol echad ve'echad. That the Eibushter wants to live in each and every one of us. So the question, the question begs: If the Eibushter is living in each of one of us, so what, why do we even have a base of to begin with? Um, so the, the the answer is that you that there needs to be a place, a specific place where the yidden can gather. Uh, these yidden. Who need to have the the Abishta living inside of them? They need to come somewhere where they can experience a revelation of God, which gives them the bittle that they need to uh, that they need to have. Which is the Alter Rebbe explains Ishtachava, because we we know that one of the things that we say in Shemayn Esrei when we say that we don't have a base on Mikdash and Ein Anu Yecholim Laalois Leirois or the Ishtachavais. So the Alter asks, "What's this hishtachavais to bow down?" And this refers to the bittel, that because every the, there's two types of hishtachava. There's two types of bowing down to Hashem. One is an external way, which is when you just bow yourself. So externally, it's like I'm saying that really I, I'm I'm my own entity and I have my own things that I want, but I'm going to bow myself to you. That's an external hishtachava. Then there's the inner hishtachava, which is in the soul. And that inner Ishtachava... Back to explaining the Beis HaMikdash. So the Alter Rebbe in the Kutateira in Parashat Vazir Sabracha is explaining that uh, every Yid has an Ashama that's a candle and that's, uh, that candle, a, a, a nair is bottle mifnei ha'avuka. The, the candle has bittle in front of the, in front of the uh, avuka. The, uh, the torch, the, um, the big fire. 
So when there's a very, very big fire, every single candle is automatically drawn to the, to, to the big fire. So being now, yes, it's true that the Abisha needs to be and wants to be dwelling in each of our hearts. Um, but we do need a central place, a base of where we where we are able to uh, experience a revelation of Hashem, which gives us that that, that great avuka, that great big fire, where our our candle of our neshama can be drawn to it. And from shalish regalim, that we come there three times a year to the base of where this revelation is, we're able to take that bittul for the rest of the year with us. The Alter Rebbe explains, and then the Alter Rebbe says, so too. Even when there's the base of Mikdash is destroyed, uh, when we have the Khurm Mesa Mikdash, which the base should be rebuilt, taken from Yad. So even though we cannot, uh, we, we are unable to, um, uh, we are unable to, to bow down, uh, to, to have that bitl, the Hishtachava, uh, that the base of can give us, still we do have a little bit of it, the Altarebbe says. We have it in the Mikdash Ma'at. In the in the base haknesses of base and base medrash in our shuls and our yeshivas, which means the Alter Rebbe says that what, during davening, when a person connects himself to his Creator, and and he wants to nullify himself to the King of the world, each each person according to their ability to work on bittul, on, uh, on on aligning your desires with the Abish's desires that you only want what Hashem wants. <laughs> This is something that we're all able to do in uh, in, in in the Mikdash Ma'at as well, even when there's the Chur Mesa Mikdash. Okay, now let's go back to the to the Kuntris. Now, I don't think I'll be able to share to share the Kuntris here. Oh. So I'll have to go without sharing the Kuntris. I'm just going to read it. Because I'm not using my computer, so I'm using my phone. Fine. Um, we're holding like this. What did we just learn from the Alter Rebbe's words? Look at the Torah that the Shechina coming down into the Beis Hamikdash. It's really the Eibusha wants to be shanti He wants to live in the Yidden, and because the Yidden need to have a way to. Uh, have an inner hishtachava. They need an actual base of mikdash to come to. That's what the that's what the base of mikdash is all about. It's about the yidden that are coming there. Mitzad ma'alasam shal yisrael. And the, 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 why does the Abishter want to live in us because of our Maila, who we are? Because yisrael v'kutra brichu kulachad. We know from the zayar that the yidden and the Abishter are really entirely. We are one with the Abishter. Kamesha Kosov, so basically, basically the Abisha wants to be dwelling in us because really we are one. Kamesha Kosov, also the Mikdash Vishachanti Besaycham, Besaycha, Elay Nemar Ela Besaycham, Badarak Zebenegay Elash Rasa Shrina with Managalos. So too, when it comes to the dwelling of the Shrina in the time of Galos, the Bog Al Hecha, the Bakanish Tahulu, Mikdash Maat. If you want to follow along without the screen sharing in the Kuntris, you can open up expand770.com and there's uh, actually a link on the on the home page right away. There's a Kuntris based membership above a link. And you can also go to the tab called resources. And then there's the next one you go to is resources in the books. And you can see a Kuntris based membership above all ready for you to open up. Now, we see also, this is really in the Gemara that we started off with, Megillah of Tesamad Aleph. The whole, the whole Gemara started off with saying, come see how much the Yidin are beloved by Hashem, that wherever the Yidin are, Shechina is always with them. So again, what do you see that, that, Really, the base of, the Abisha being in the base of Mikdash is because the Abisha wants to be in Yidden. He wants to be in a Yid. And in order for the Abisha to be in a Yid, so he needs a central place so that all the Yidden can come together and, uh, and, and experience a revelation of the Abisha. 
ולא אוי דאלו שיסגלוס השכינו בבייס המקדוש מפני שבוי מסאספים כל בני ישראל. Not just this, the revelation of the שכינו in the בייס המקדוש is because the Yidin are gathering there. Because the Yidin gather there, so that's why the Ebesha comes to the Beis HaMikdosh to reveal himself. And over here we're going we're gonna to quote the Pasuk that comes uh, speaking about Hakel, and being that we're in a Hakel year, so it's also important to mention this is a Hakel, what we're doing now, we're learning Torah together. Um, and over here, uh, the, the, so the Rebbe brings a Pasuk, B'voi kol Yisrael le'iroi says p'nei ha'avaya le'kecha b'mokim asher yivcha. That when that by the the pasuk goes that uh, at the, the end of the year of Shemitah, the year after Shemitah, which is the year of Hakel, so all the Yidden gather together by the base of Mikdash to uh, to see the face of Hashem in the place that Hashem chooses. So why is Hashem choosing the base of Mikdash? Why does Hashem reveal His Shechina in the base of Mikdash? Because of Hakel, because the Yidden are gathering together over there. So too with the shoals and the Israel, where there gather a minion of Yidin. As we know, we know that whenever there are ten Yidin, ten male adults, the Shechina is dwelling there. The, when there's a minion of Yidin, the, the Shechina is there. Uh, in Ha'ara 48, the Rebbe quotes the Tanya Yigar Sakai the Shemim Chav Chav Gimel. Now the Rebbe says Shemati Meraboisai. I heard from my Rebbes Ki Ilu Nimtzem Malach Echad. I made B'Maima Da Sarem Yisrael B'Yachad that if there would be a Malach that shows up in 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 the presence of ten Yidden that they are gathered together. Even if these ten Yidden are not speaking words of Torah. Tipoil olav a masav a fachad b'li gvul v'tachlis. This malach will it, it will befall on him a great, uh, a, an infinite, unlimited fear and dread. Mishchinta de sharia alayhu from the shchina which is dwelling on these ten yidden. Ad shahayim is battle mimitziusi legamli. This fear and dread would uh, be so intense for the malach that this malach would become nullified and lose his identity completely, lose his existence. This is also why, this is also one of the reasons that the shuls in Bati Midrash in Babel are called a, a small Mikdash. Because by the by the great base of Mikdash, where it wasn't Ma'at, it was the Godo over there. That's where all the Yidin would gather, especially on the year of Hakel. So, so therefore, because all the Yidin came there, so therefore, the revelation of the entirety of the Shechina was there. The Shechina's name. Is actually the Knesset Yisrael, which means the congregation of Yisrael. So you see, the, when there's, if you're trying to find Shechina, what's another name for Shechina? Shechina's name is, Shechina's name is congregation of Israel. So where do you find Shechina? You find Shechina where all of Yisrael, where the congregation of Yisrael is. And Shechina is Makkah Knesset Yisrael Shalamata. The reason why it's called congregation of Yisrael. Is because it is the mucker, the source of the congregation of Israel that is down here in this world. Contrary to the shoals and the midrashis that are in Gaulus, in all the places in Gaulus that even went, Shabahem is Asfim Asaram Israel. In those shoals and the midrashis, you don't have all of the Eden gathering there. You only have a million of Yidin, or a few million of Yidin, or more. But the point is, it's not the entirety of the congregation of Israel in one show. So, so therefore, So therefore, uh, only a piece, a chelek, a part of the Shekhinah, because really there are no parts to Shekhinah. Shekhinah is one, and, but 
Kavayachal, a part of Hashem uh, dwells and is revealed in each of these shuls and Batim Midrashis. I want to also quote, um, being that we spoke about a part, Kavayachal, um, in Ha'ara 47, the Rebbe quotes um, the Gemara, Sanhedrin Amitesim and Aleph. And in that Gemara, the Gemara has a few stories there, that uh, mainly a few stories about the emperor asking Rabbi Gamliel certain questions. And there's some beautiful, some beautiful questions over there and answers. One of the questions are, the, the, the emperor asks Rabbi Gamliel, tell me Rabbi Gamliel, how many, how many shchinas do you have? How many gods do you have? Because it says, it says, I call Be'asara shchin tashariya. On every ten yidden, the the Ebesha dwells. So how many shchinas do you have? Because wherever there's a minion, every shul and the shchinas there. So how many are there? So Rabbi Gamliel, the way he answered was he he uh, he slapped a servant of the emperor on the neck, and he told him, "Hey, why did you let the sun into the emperor's palace?" So the emperor responded for the servant, "What do you mean? He let the sun in." The sun shines over the whole entire world, and uh, no one can stop the sun from coming into the into the palace or coming any, in, into any house. The sun comes where it, it, it is a sun and it shines over the whole world. So Rabbi Gamliel responds, "So if this is the case, by only one of the of the tens of thousands of servants that Hashem has, if that's the case, that that this this one servant is able to get, to to shine for the whole entire world." How much more so the Shechina of the Eibush there, that it could shine for the entire world, uh, 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 only one Shechina for the entire world. Back to the According to this, we can explain this additional quality that the Rebbe is trying to show us in Ois Hay of Beis Rabbeinu Shabbat Bavel. Now, where was the Rebbe starting off? That it's base Rabbeinu, it's the Rebbe, the Nasi, who is Nasi Hu Hakoil. So here he goes. Because base Rabbeinu, Shabbat Bavel, is the established place, the permanent place of the Nasi Hadar, Ha Nasi Hu Hakoil, Shakoil El Kol Hadar, because he's the Nasi, he includes the entire generation. Therefore, Yesh Boi Hashra As Vegiloi Kalalus Hashrima, Loirak Chelek. Therefore, the dwelling and the revelation of Shechina that is present in Beis Rabbeinu Shebebovel is the entirety of the Shechina. Not just a part, Kveyachel, that is dwelling on a, on a minion of Yidin, on a few Yidin, on, on ten Yidin. We're dealing with the entirety of the Shechina as Beis Rabbeinu Shebebovel. Why? Because this in Beis Rabbeinu Shebebovel is the Nasi, and the Nasi is everyone. He includes all of the Yidin. So, so therefore, because the Nasi is there, so all of the Yidin are in the, are in Beis Rabbeinu Shebebovel. And because all the Yidin are in Beis Rabbeinu Shebebovel, it's just like the Beis Mikdash, where all the Yidin gather. And, and, and like we said, and that, because all the Yidin gather there, that's why the Shekhinah comes to the Beis Mikdash. The Shekhinah is not looking to, to stam live in a house of 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 of, of eitz, eitz The Shekhinah wants to be b'seicham. It b'seich kol echad ve'echad, because Shekhinah wants to be in a yid. So therefore, Shekhinah makes and 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 all the yidden come and gather together in one central place. So that's where the Shekhinah shows himself. Ha'ada forty nine, neisav lekach. Shagam be pastus, miscapsim of boim the base of Benishab above all Rabbi Misro. He said that says, in addition to the fact that the pastus, it happens to be that that 770 base of Benishab above all, many, many yidden come. There, there's there's a, a very big amount, there's a very high quantity of yidden that come, which is shaloi be erech, like Abi Shar Batiknesi is about the Midrashis, which is which cannot be compared to other shuls and about the Midrashis, about how many yidden that come there. <laughs> Sorry. Well, the higher Mereish Hashanah of Dalar Amid Beis, and to, and the Rebbe quotes now from the Gemara Mereish Hashanah of Dalar Amid Beis, Kivan the Nasi who Shchichi Rabim Gabei. So in Mereish Hashanah of Dalar Amid Beis, also speaking about Rabim Amliel, who we were just speaking about, but about with the with the Emperor 
about I called I saw the shkin to Sharia. So it's over there in in, in Gemara Shoshana. It, it it says like this. It says that Abraham Leo uh, had these um, pictures of the moon, and uh, and when people would come, uh, when witnesses would come to say that they saw the new moon, Abraham Gamliel would pull out these pictures of the moon, and he would ask them if this is what they saw or if this is what they saw. So that, the the problem is that there's a that there's a, a pasuk that says that you're not allowed to have uh, pictures of the Abish's servants. So the Gemara tries answering different things, and I'm not sure if this is the final answer uh, on, in that in that Gemara. But the Gemara over there says, the Gemara over there says like this. First, the Gemara quotes and says that because we're dealing with that it, because it was the sh- that there's no suspicion over here. Uh, there's, there's no problem with these molds of the these pictures of the moon, because. It's talking about uh, oh uh, how do we know because in in this in this case it's not a problem as we see by the shul of Beikanishta the shaf v'yosiv in Arda what what happened by that shul which by the way we all know that shul what that is because we mentioned it earlier that that's one of the shuls with the shechina that's the main mikdash me'at of Bavel so in that shul the hava bay on in Dirata, that shul had something called what they call Indrata. Indrata is a statue of the king. Vahavu Aili Ravu Shmuel, Vavu Adishmuel, Velevi, Omatslu Hasan. And we know clearly that Rav, which is Rabbeinu, and Shmuel, and the father of Shmuel, and Levi, they would all go and dive in, 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 in the shul of Shafi Yasuf in Arda. And they did not, uh, they, 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 they were not concerned about arousing suspicion because of this statue. So, uh, so the Yomara says, you can't prove me from there because Rabim, there's, 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 a, there's a, a big group of people. And when there's a big group of men, when there are many Jews present, then there's no suspicion about idolatrous intentions. And then the Yomara says, but what about Abba Gamliel? He was a Yachid. And uh, and uh, so, uh, and so if he's a yachid, you can't compare to the story of uh, to this bacon uh, to the shul of Shafi Yosef where they had a statue of the king on it. So the Gemara answers, no, you could compare it because Rabbi Gamliel is the nasi, and Kiv on the nasi who shchichi Rabim Gabei, because he's the nasi. So there are always many hidden by the nasi. Many people are always found by the nasi. So therefore, he's just like, the Nasi is just like the Shul of Shafi Yosef and Arda, where there's no worry, there's no suspicion, because there's a Rabbim. So over here, the Rebbe says, so in addition to the fact that it happens to also be that there's always a lot of people here in, in, in Beis Abinash of Bavel, much more than other Shuls, and the Rebbe says, and why is it because the, because the Nasi is here, and, the, and the, the Nasi attracts all the many people to come here? He says, but in addition to that, because the Nasi is Hakoil, because the Nasi is everyone, so really this is uh, this is the place where the entirety of the Shekhinah is, just like the Beis HaMikdash itself. Me'ein Dugmas, back to the Sikha inside, Me'ein Dugmas Ashra, so Gilei HaShekhinah Beis HaMikdash, similar to the Gilei HaShekhinah that there was in the Beis HaMikdash, and Nos HaMikdash V'yosh Avsham, like we said before, about the shul of Shav V'yosif, which we just mentioned in the, in the Gemara of Rosh Hashanah, that where, where Rav would go daven, Beis HaBeinu Shebebavel, in Shav V'yosif, where the Beis HaMikdash, one of the reasons for the name Shav V'yosif means that the Mikdash traveled from its place and settled over there in this new shul. And like we said, like, like we explained in our past Yudim, that, uh, that there was actually stones that were taken from the Beis HaMikdash and uh, they were put into this shul in, in, in Bavel. Uh, okay, let's, let's go back over here inside. He says this, uh, from, from the base of from this show, this this uh, from this main show, the Mikdash Ma'at, uh, 
where that's just like the Gilish Shechina of Beis Hamikdash, it also gives off a revelation of Shechina to all the other shuls about the Midrashos in Golos. Just like the Beis Hamikdash also does the same thing. We know from uh, from uh, there's Yerushalmi that says that uh, the word Aroin. Uh, the reason it's called Arain is because from it, is, it sounds like Aira, uh, that from the Arain, light goes out to the whole entire world. So too, it's like the Arain, it's where the light, Aira Yaisal Chalaylam. And the Rebbe adds a chiddush over here that we can say that base the, the house of Nasi Hader, because he's Hakoil Nasi Huakoil, so he includes the whole generation. So he, it is also similar to the word Tal Piyos. Now there's a there's a pasuk that uh, that the, the Chazal give a, a, a give a, a drush. About what does the word tal piyos mean? Tal piyos means the tail, the the mound. Uh, it's referring to the Beis Hamikdash after the Churban. That the even after the Churban, there's still it's still the uh, without all of us should still dive in towards the Beis Hamikdash, because this is the Churban is the mound to which all the mouths, the piyos, are uh, are facing, because all of us when we daven. We, our mouths are begging that the Beis should be rebuilt, and uh, and therefore we're all facing this mound. So tail should call is and so the Rebbe says similar to be, be, uh, that that the the, the the bias of Nasi Adar is also similar to tail pies, because all Yidden are looking towards Rabbeinu, are looking at the Rebbe, and. Uh, so therefore, it's the tel, it's the tel, the the tal piyos. Va'ayd ve'iker ma'ilas beis rabbeinu shibabavel b'negi ala hagola. Now the Rebbe also shows us the ma'ilas of beis rabbeinu shibabavel, even 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 b'negi ala to the gola. Rabbeinu nasi hadair who gam hamashiach goyalon shay yisrael shibadir. The Nasi Adar is also the Mashiach, the Redeemer of the Yidden of the generation. Ha'ara 53. Lahir to point out. Every single Yid has a spark of Mashiach. And because we know that every Yid has a spark of Mashiach, we can also now explain and show that the what the, what the Chazal teach us on the Pasuk, there are two seemingly contradicting uh, explanations on this Pasuk, that they actually match. Because there's one Chazal that teaches in Yerushalmi, Tainis, that it's going on Melech HaMashiach. And there's another uh, Yerushalmi, Yerushalmi Maeser Sheni, Seif Paragdala, that says, that that Pasuk goes on every one of the Yidden. So the truth is, both of them are true. Because every single Yid has a spark of Mashiach. The, the level of Yechida, of your Neshama, is a spark of Mashiach. And it is a spark of the Yechida HaKlalis, which is the Nishmas Mashiach. Mashiach is the general Yechida of all of us, and each of us have a spark uh, of Mashiach because each of us have a level of Yechida in our Neshama that connects to the Yechida HaKlalis. The Kiv Ansha Nasi Hu because the Nasi is everyone, Shekoilo Kol Hanitzot says the Mashiach Shvuchalecha Dech Nisrael. So because he's everyone, that means that he includes all everyone's sparks of Mashiach. Because everyone has a spark of Mashiach. Because everyone has the Yechida Pratis. Bechinas Yechida Pratis. Nimtza comes out and Ishmasai he bechinas a Yechida Aklalis. The Neshama of of the Nasi who's Hakoil, he has Yechida Aklalis. And being that we see that. Because he's Hakoil, 
and he has everyone's yichida, so he's yichida haklalis. So therefore, nishmasa shel Mashiach, he is the neshama of Mashiach. But lachain who ha Mashiach shabedar. So therefore, we can say clearly, he is the nasi hadar is Mashiach shabedar. Kemai meishe rabenu. Back to the sikh inside. That was the ha'ara. Kemai meishe rabenu. Ha nasi arishin, just like meishe rabenu, who was the first nasi. And we know that it says, Goyal Rishon, who Goyal Achrein. Moshe, who is the first Goyal, he's also the last Goyal. And now we know that uh, we know that Moshe Rabbeinu was a Levi from Shevet Levi, and we know that Mashiach, Melech Mashiach, is from Shevet Yehuda. It's from it's from David Melech's children and, and Shlomo Melech's children from Shevet Yehuda. So how is it possible that why, why do we say that Moshe Goyal Rishon who Goyal Achrein? Because the same story. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, who was the first Nasi, he is Nasi Hu Hakoil. So therefore, he is Mashiach, the Goyal of the of that generation. So too, the Goyal of the last generation, who is it? It's the Nasi of that generation, the Nasi Hu Hakoil. Kiyadua, as it is known, this is a famous Chassam Sefer. That in every generation there is one person who is fitting to be the, the redeemer of the Yidden. And when, it, when the time will come, the Abishter will reveal himself to this person and will send him to redeem the Yidden. And it's only reasonable, logical to say that who is this person, this Echad Haroi, this one person who is fitting to be the Goyal? Shahu, shahu Nasi Hadar. It is the, the Nasi of the generation. Kimifurish Bigamara. And as we know that it's stated in the Gemara, in Sanhedrin, Sadiq Chesam and Beis, al Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, speaking about Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. And who is the one that speaks about Rabbi Yehuda Anasi in that Gemara? It was Rav, Omar Rav. And I, we were also referring to the whole time we were talking about Beis Rabbeinu. Who's, who's Rabbeinu? Rav, Rashi says. Because Rav was the Rebbe of Bavel. And who would, and, and who would Rav uh, exchange sparks of fire with that we mentioned before in the Gemara? When uh, when we were when we were saying that in the Ha'ad over there that that Rav is the Reish Sidra, the 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 the, the head of the yeshiva of Bavel, so Rabbi Yechanan tells Isi that I remember I sat seventeen rows behind Rav and Rav and Rabbi and, and Rabbi and Rabbi Huda Nasi, they would speak to each other and flames of fire would would uh, sparks of fire would would exchange one another, and. Uh, so over there it says Amar Rav. And we also mentioned the, the Pirush Rashbam. The Rashbam said that why is he called Rav? He's called Rav just like Rabbeinu HaKadosh, just like Rabbi Yehuda HaNasi is called Rabbeinu in Eretz, in Eretz Yisrael. So to Rav in Bavel is called Rabbeinu of Bavel. And in Ha'ara 57 you'll see the Rebbe says, because we know that Rav was just like Rabbeinu HaKadosh, just like Rabbi Yehuda Anasi. Rav was in Bavel. So therefore, when Rav says something about Rabbeinu HaKadosh, he's really paskening the same thing about himself because he was just like Rabbi. He was just like Rabbi Yehuda Anasi. And then in, a, in the star, at the bottom of the footnotes, the Rebbe quotes from the Pirkei Avais. Pirkei Avais says that everyone gives a din v'cheshpen. And so, so the, there's a famous question. Why does it say that, that, that everyone has to give a din v'cheshpen, uh, a, a ruling and a calculation? It should be first calculation and then a ruling. But we know that the reason is because really a pers when a person paskins and says something, a ruling about, about his friend, he's really giving that ruling on himself. And uh, when it comes the time for judgment day, they actually, they, they, they show the person, look, this is the ruling that you gave about your friend. And because you did the same thing that your friend did, which, which, with which you gave a ruling. So therefore, this applies to you, this ruling as well. So that's why we say, 
din v'cheshpin. We take the ruling that you already gave, and then we make a cheshpin, and we say, look, calculation shows that you that you deserve the same ruling. So too with Rav, that because Rav says this about Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, he's also referring to himself. Amar Rav, imin chaya, who, kegayin abeinu HaKadosh. It's speaking about who is Mashiach in the Gemara over there. And Rav says, if it's from those who are living, it's like Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Im Mashiach me'oyson shechayin achshav, Vadai Hainu Rabbeinu Hakadosh Hanasi Shabidar. If Mashiach is from those who are living now, it's surely it's Rabbeinu Hakadosh who is the Nasi of our generation. Now, in Ha'ara 58, the Rebbe quotes Stei Chemet. And the Stei Chemet says like this Bederech Haze Hoya Meshur Etzlam Bechol Der Mihu. In this way, with this line of thinking, this logic was always it was always expected, was always mature, uh, understood by every generation who Mashiach is. Rabbeinu Akadosh b'dayrei amru v'yadu shehu amuchan. When it when it was the generation of Rabbeinu Akadosh, they said and they knew that he was the one who's ready. He's the one that that's ra'oi. That if Hashem allows it, then Hashem will, will reveal Himself and, and send Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, Rabbi to, 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 to redeem the Yidden. The Stechemet continues. So too is in every single generation. There needs to always be someone who is fit, someone who fits the bill, who's ready to go redeem the Yidden if the Yidden are are are, are deserving. And according to this, also the, the students of the Arizal wrote that in his days, this person who was fit to be Mashiach was the Arizal. The Stechemet finishes off by saying, All of this is simple, simple stuff. Okay, so the Rebbe is, is telling us like this, that the Oyed V'ikr, the Maila B'Shem B'Shem B'Avah, B'Nei Giyat to the Geula. Because Rabbeinu is the Nasi HaDair, who is the Mashiach of the Dair. Umizeh Muvn, She'ikr in Yonah Yishol B'Shem 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 B'Avah, from here we understand that what is the main Indian of B'Shem 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 B'Avah, who HaGeula Mi B'Avah. The main Indian of what is B'Shem 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 B'Avah all about, let's see, it's called Beis Rabbeinu Shebebavol, the house of Rabbeinu. What is Rabbeinu? Rabbeinu is Mashiach. Now, so what is, so basically what are we saying? What we're saying here is the Iker Indian of Beis Rabbeinu Shebebavol is to redeem the Yidden. Mashiach's job. Hagaulam mi Babel. Aydei hanesinas kayach leklalos avidasim shal Yisrael. How does Mashiach do his job? How does Rabbeinu? How does the Rebbe do his job? By giving an esinas koyach to the service, the avoda of the yidden, la so is mi bavel chutz laaretz eretz yisrael to mach kibiskem ayadua aseikan bechutz laaretz eretz yisrael to to take galus to take chutz laaretz and turn it into eretz yisrael, as the famous piskum is to make eretz yisrael here instead of running to Israel, make Israel here. Um. Good. Sheinian zenasa How does this? How does this happen? How does the Rebbe give koyach to the Yidden to machda eretz Yisrael? How does the Rebbe give the koyach to the Yidden? This is specifically lechol l'roish al yidei binyan ubatei knesias ubatei midrashis mikdash maat baratzes hasher baosham. Sorry, I, I I was I did not explain that properly. The Rebbe is saying that the Rebbe gives the the koyach to the yidden to do their avoda of making machda uh, eretz yisrael of making out of chutz laaretz out of bavel into eretz yisrael. How do how do the yidden do that by building shuls and batim midrashos in the, in all of the lands? And in the order sixty, the Rebbe says koylel gam batim pratim de yisrael, including uh, each person's personal house to make his personal house into a house of 
of Taira and Tfila Gmilas Khasadim, Ashraida Vidas Musha Yisra, the Taira Tfila Gmilas Khasadim, the Bate and Apratiyim, Nasim Haim, Bate Taira Tfila Gmach, Adarah Dugmas Mikdash Ma'at. So also by so not just building actual shuls, but also making your own house into a shul and a base medrash and a, a place of Gmilas Khasadim. And from all these shuls and batim midrashes and batim pratim that the Yidin make in Bavel, in Galus, from there comes out Kedusha and the, 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 the holiness shines and, and, and sanctifies all of the all of the Eretz Amim, all of the Chutz that, that, that there is. And through this, we hasten and we affect the fulfillment of the promise that Eretz Yisrael will one day be, will one day spread out to all the lands. For one day, the entire world will be on the level that Eretz Yisrael is now. And then once Eretz Yisrael is over the whole world, then also the whole Eretz Yisrael, current Eretz Yisrael, will be on the level of Yerushalayim. And that's what we say, that Yerushalayim will spread out to the whole entire Eretz Yisrael. Because we know that uh, soon all the shuls, like we like we mentioned in the earlier ICAs, all the shuls and Bat Midrashis of Bavel will be connected to the base of Mikdash. So and that will automatically so the base of Mikdash will be bigger because it will have every shul and base and base medrash connected to it. So Yerushalayim will be bigger to the size of Eretz Yisrael. And Eretz Yisrael will be over the, all the lands of the entire world because of what? Because of the Nisinas Kayach that, that Rabbeinu uh, gives to the Yidin to make uh, to to make Eretz to make Chutz Laaretz into Eretz Yisrael. Now the key on she ikrin yonoi shall be Yisrael beinu shall be Bavel who key butz vaasifas kol habatik nisiyis about the midrash shall be Bavel lekavam be Eretz Yisrael because the main Indian of Yisrael beinu shall be Bavel is to gather and collect all of the shuls and and about the midrashes in Bavel to to bring to establish them in Eretz Yisrael. Meaning what we just said. That, that the Rebbe, who is in Beis Rabbeinu, his job is to be Mashiach, to redeem the Yidin. How does he do that? Through, through giving the Yidin the Koyach to make Eretz Yisrael here by building shuls and building Bat Midrashes and, and turning their own houses into these places of Teira, Tfila, Ogmilas Chasadim. So that enables all of these places to become a part of Eretz Yisrael. Like we said, Machda Eretz Yisrael, to connect all of these places to the base of Mikdash, Mechuber the base of Mikdash, Harehu Leirak Hamikdash Maato Ikri BeBavel Shenasa Mikdash Viyashav Sham. So what we're saying here is that base of Menashe BeBavel is not just a, a Galus thing. It's not just that during Galus it's the main Mikdash Maat where the base of Mikdash traveled and moved to, but rather Alagam Mokem Hamikdash Gufei Dela Asid. This itself is the place of the Beis Hamikdash of the future. Shaboy is Gala Hamikdash Lo Asid, or Misham Yashu of Yerushalayim, where the Beis Hamikdash will reveal itself first here in Beis Hamikdash of Bavel, and from there it will it will go back to Yerushalayim, the Beis Hamikdash. Because, like we explained. That what is the whole in why does the Abishta come to the base of Mikdash? Why is the Klalos Hashina? Why is the entirety of the Shina revealed in the base of Mikdash? Because that's where all the Yidin are gathered. So being that base Rabbeinu gathers all the Yidin by giving all the Yidin the Koyach to go all over the lands and make shuls about the Midrashes, and therefore Mahda Eretz Yisrael. So really, this is what. This is the place of the base of Mikdash. This is where the, all the Yidin are. It is the center for which gives the Kayach to all Yidin. So this, the, so 770, it gathers all the Yidin. And therefore, because all the Yidin are gathered here, 
Therefore, this is where the entire the entirety of the Shekhinah is revealed. This is the end of Ais Hay. And next week, Emir Hashem will continue with Ais Vav. Thank you very much for joining us. And please help us continue our efforts to promote and encourage expansion by going to expand770.com and donating, as well as joining not just B'mamaynay, but also B'gufay with your, with your actual body, which is by becoming a part of the promotion and encouragement of expansion, which means starting off with your own sphere of influence, speaking to your friends and family, and all those who you know about the expansion, to be a voice of support that the expansion must happen, and we've waited enough time, and there's no reason to mix the expansion into any other issues. All other issues could be dealt with as on, on the side, but the expansion must be it's the Rebbe, it's what, it's what the Rebbe wants, and as we see that uh, how, how vital it is to the Avaida of all the Yidin and all the Shluchim, also, in all the shuls that everyone makes, and the midrashes, and everyone's houses, it's all, it all depends on the on, on the center, on Beis Rabbeinu Shabbat where, where the Rebbe is giving the kayak for us to Machda Eretz Yisrael. So we need a, a shul where all of us fit, especially in Isaiah, where he speaks about that what what makes the Beis Hamikdash so special, and what makes Beis Rabbeinu so special is because this is where all the Eden gather. And what we're dealing with now is, is, is Beis Rabbeinu Shabbat does not have room. Unfortunately, does not have room for... When Gashmas Begashmas. Uh, Pasha Begashmas. There's, there's no room for the Yidin to gather. And, and this is, in Ois Hay, the Rebbe is very clear, this is what makes the Beis Hamikdash so special. The reason why the entirety of the Shechina comes to the Beis Hamikdash is because there's a hakel of all the Yidin. This is where all the Yidin come. So it, we understand how vital and important of a mission it is to expand 770 so that all Yidin can, can, can take a gather in 770 and we can have, instead of it being called Mikdash Ma'at, it should, it should be actually oh. the Mikdash HaGadol oh, comes first and from here we should move to Yerushalayim. Oh, 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 tonight we should all go to Yerushalayim with Mashiach now. Thank you very much.